This week off work has been very fruitful for my knitting. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today's episode is podcast number 27 where I'll be sharing what I've been knitting for the past two weeks. Well, happy new year everyone. Welcome to the first official podcast of 2024. I'm really excited to be sitting down and filming today's video. I have a lot to share, a lot of knitting stuff ever since I finished all of my gift knits which I'll be talking about today. I have just gone full steam ahead on some new products projects. I have some new yarn to show you, so this should be a jam-packed episode. Before we get into the content, I'll start with what I'm wearing today, and that is my Lanakai Summer Tea that I knit earlier this year. I knit it out of Sorelli Yarn's Bamboo Sock in the color Pinot Noir, and I'm really enjoying it. Even though it is a summer t-shirt, sometimes it gets a little warm in my apartment, so... That's what I have on today, and yeah, so let's get right into the projects. So I have a good amount of finished objects to share with you all. We just got through Christmas. I gift knitted a decent amount of projects, a handful of hats, some a pair of socks, and I also was working throughout the month of December on my Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordlin. So that is the first finished object that I'll talk about. So here it is, my Turtle Dove Shawl. So this was a mystery knit along that Sari Nordlin hosted for the month of December. She divided this shawl up into four clues that she released one week at a time. I signed up for the mystery knit along by purchasing the pattern before she had revealed any of the clues. I think before she had revealed any of the clues, the only thing she had posted on her Instagram was the backside of the shawl. So it was really a true mystery, except you knew what shape it was. And of course she told you the suggested yarn. So the yarn that I ended up using for this shawl was Pickles Bliss in the color Marble. It is a single ply fingering weight yarn. It's a blend of alpaca, mohair, and wool. And it's a really interesting yarn. I've never worked with anything quite like it before. It has a nice halo. It is extremely soft and I thought it would be a good choice for the shawl. I did hold it double on four millimeter needles to knit this. The suggested yarn for the shawl itself from Sari's pattern is a fingering weight wool held with a lace weight silk mohair on three and a half millimeter needles. My fabric I think is a little bit denser than that combo of yarn, so that's why I increased my needle size. I have been working on this shawl for the whole month of December and I have been talking about each clue as I've gone through them in each of my podcasts, so I won't go into too many details about the shawl. I'll more talk about the object itself as a finished piece. You can see here the shape and I'm realizing now that I didn't actually measure it so I don't have measurements for you guys but you can see it has a decent amount of length. You know this is my arm held out and then from tip to tip it's pretty long for like the depth. That's how deep it is. You know it's a decent size shawl. I like it. I think it's a pretty easy size to wrap around my neck. It's long enough where if I want to tie it into a single knot around the front I can, however, I think, you know, it kind of does that. And I can't tell if that's because it is a thicker fabric or if maybe it should be a little bit longer to, you know, help it sit a little bit flatter and neater, but nothing wrong with this. It is just a little bit bulky when you tie it in a single knot. I do also really like wearing it kind of just like this. I think it'll be a good layering piece to wear with a coat. You know, you have sometimes that like open space on a winter coat that could easily be filled in with this, but it's not super bulky like a full size scarf where you have to figure out what to do with the rest of the scarf once you wrap it around your neck. So overall, I am really happy with this finished object. I love the fabric. It is the tiniest bit itchy around my neck, but nothing to the point where I don't want to wear it. It's just I feel it a little bit. Maybe as time goes on as I'm wearing it, it feels a little bit more comfortable as sort of the fibers warm up to my skin. But in general, I really liked knitting and wearing this yarn. The pattern design is really nice. I really like what Sari did with the different motifs. It mostly alternates between cables and this zigzag twisted stitch pattern that is weaving between sets of baubles. The cable patterns are slightly different from each other. You have a very traditional sort of horseshoe cable here and then in the middle you have what kind of looks like a horseshoe cable but there is a purl stitch in the middle to make it two separate cables and then right at the tip here you have just a little bit of cabling that doesn't really develop much before you have to start decreasing again. 
All of those sections are separated by these ladders and overall I think the whole pattern design has a lot of harmony. I think it has a lot of balance and I really like it. At first I was a little bit skeptical when I started knitting the mystery knit along. A lot of the motifs were repeating itself and it wasn't really a true mystery once you got past the second clue. But in the end, I think as a whole, this shawl came together really well. I really like the design. The baubles were new to me. I've never knit baubles before and I really enjoyed it. I like how they look. And I think it's kind of a wintry looking shawl. I think the motif has a little bit of holiday inspiration, which makes sense since it was a December knit along. I had a lot of fun knitting this. I'm really glad I chose to participate in the mystery knit along and I'm really excited to have this finished piece to wear this winter. Next up for finished objects, I had finished all of my gift knits. The last time I spoke to you all in a podcast, I was in the middle of knitting a few awesome hats. I had finished the Oslo hats, have shipped them off to their recipients, and I was also working on a pair of DK weight knit socks as well for a gift. So for the Oslo hats, I actually filmed a little clip before I mailed them away so I could show you all what they looked like, talk about the dimensions in the fit, so we will cut to that clip right now. Hello, it's Amy from the past. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about all the Oslo hats that I knit for Christmas gifts. In total, I made four Oslo hats over the course of a little less than a month. It was definitely a rush to finish them. Like I said, I was a little bit behind schedule, so probably should have started them earlier. I'll just go through each of them one by one to give you the specs and the sizing, just to give you an idea if maybe you're interested in knitting the Oslo hat. Specifically for children, all of these are the younger children and baby sizes, so I'll be talking about that as well. So this is my first Oslo hat. It is for one of my relatives who is a baby. She is less than one years old. She is, I wanna say about nine months old. Now for this baby also hat, I actually cast on 88 stitches, which is not a size in any of the patterns. This was based off of my research that I did from Ravelry project pages for other people who knit the baby also hat and just said that the stitch counts provided in the patterns were just way too big all around. So I cast on 88 stitches. The yarn that I used is Red Stag Fiber Dashes Sock in the color Royal Ballet which is a nice brown color. My lighting right now is less than ideal, so the colors are definitely not gonna be as true as I would prefer, but it's this really nice heathered sort of light brown color. This yarn is a fingering weight yarn. It is 70% superwash wool, 20% yak, and 10% nylon or polyamide. There are 437 yards per skein in this yarn or about 400 meters and I held it double on three and a half millimeter needles and I ended up using a total of 80 grams of yarn for this and my finishing gauge ended up being 25 stitches per four inches which is a little bit tighter than the suggested gauge in the pattern which is 23 stitches per four inches. So I measured the total width from the side of the brim to the other side of the brim and this is about seven and a half inches across which means the total circle circumference of the hat is about 15 inches. Now I don't live close to the recipients of these hats so I was never able to measure their head sizes and kind of wanted to keep it a surprise so I didn't ask you know their parents to measure their head sizes either and I know with children and babies there's so much variance but I was just trusting the Craft Yarn Council chart to sort of guide my sizing and according to the Craft Yarn Council chart for the baby head circumference it ranges from 14 to 16 inches and with a hat you want a little bit of negative ease so my hat circumference being 15 inches should fit quite well I hope again with hats you know they stretch and I would rather have them be too big than too small so if anything if this is too large for a nine month old I would hope that she will grow into it soon so the next hat that I made is also for a baby in my family however this baby is a little bit older than the first recipient this baby is about 15 months old so I still followed the Oslo hat baby size with the stitch count that I did for the previous hat. So I cast it on 88 stitches and the yarn that I used was Knit Picks Hawthorne and the color Penatoni Speckle, which is this really nice sort of yellowy base with a lot of 
orange, yellow, and some blue speckles. Now this yarn, I also held double on three and a half millimeter needles. However, I found while knitting this that this was a lot thicker of a fabric and I think the yarn is a lot thicker than traditional fingering weight yarns. This was a two ply yarn and generally two ply yarns are thicker. And in the 100 gram skein of this yarn, you only get 357 yards, which is 326 meters. So I think this made for a lot bigger of a hat despite using the same exact stitch count as this one. And you can see that difference here if I line up the hats, which I think is good because like I said, this baby is older than the first baby. So I would want it to be a little bit bigger. So I cast on 88 stitches for this. I follow the directions for the brim length, however, for the body length of the hat, because this yarn had such less yardage than the other skein that I had used, I was wanting to conserve yarn. So I knit the body of the hat, like from the turn to where you start the decreases to about three and three quarters inches long, which is a shortening compared to the pattern directions. And then I followed the decreases as specified. So overall, this gave me a wider hat, but a shorter hat. And in total, I used 94 grams of yarn, which was almost the whole skein. So I'm glad that I made that decision to shorten the hat body. Otherwise I might've run out of yarn for this baby also hat. The total width across from one side of the brim to the other is eight and a half inches, which gives me a total circumference of 17 inches. And it is a little bit bigger than the Craft Yarn Council head circumference for baby 14 to 16 inches. However, you know, this baby is going to grow, so I hope that if it is too big, that she will grow into it in the future. Oh, I did forget to mention gauge. With this hat, I did meet the gauge of the pattern, which was 22 stitches per four inches. Again, it's about 22 to 23, it says in the pattern, so I was on gauge, but I found that the fabric was very dense and honestly kind of uncomfortable to knit, so even though I did meet gauge, I would consider sizing up a needle size if you're using a thicker fingering weight yarn, just so you don't get like an uncomfortably tight fabric. This this is the third Oslo hat that I made for a relative who is six years old. She loves pink and I was really excited to knit this hat because the yarn combo is really nice. So for this hat, I held together one fingering weight sock yarn, which was Sorella yarn nylon sock in the color boulangerie. And then I held that with birch and lily fiber birch surrey, which is a surrey silk yarn in the color marvelous. So the sock yarn was just a plain pale pink, but the Surrey alpaca was this beautifully speckled yarn. So all of the speckles comes entirely from the Surrey alpaca yarn. So following the also had mohair edition pattern, I made the size junior small. I cast on the prescribed number of stitches based on the pattern for this, and I knit it exactly to pattern. So I used 48 grams of the sock yarn. And remember that was just held single. And then for the Surrey alpaca, I used 62 grams held single. So together a DK weight yarn knit with three and a half millimeter needles. My finished gauge for the fabric of this hat ended up being 23 stitches per four inches. So I was right on gauge with this hat as well, which is really nice. The total width across the brim is eight and three quarters inches. So that means the total circumference of the hat is 17 and a half inches. According to the Craft Yarn Council measurements for a child size head circumference, it could range anywhere from 18 to 20 inches. So again, knowing that I want negative ease on this hat, I think I hit the target for sizing. This is probably my favorite hat out of the bunch. I love the color and the speckling. It's just so pretty. I also just love the feel of the fabric. Like it's very drapey and it feels very soft. It feels very comfortable to wear. Whereas I said before, like this fabric was very thick and stiff. I don't love it as much, but this one just feels really nice. And I think it's going to be a really good winter hat. And this is the last Oslo hat that I knit for my nephew. He is seven years old, going to be turning eight, not very long from now. So seven going on eight and he really likes blue. So I was really excited to knit this blue Oslo hat. I knit this on three and a half millimeter needles and I followed the junior large size from the Oslo hat mohair edition pattern. Now the difference between the junior small and the junior large size is just four stitches. So there's actually not a lot of difference in sizing from this one to this one. And the brim length 
I think it's a little bit longer on the large one, but the body length of the hat is the same. This is what I got for the final result of the hat. The yarn that I used was Birch and Lily Fiber Co. Birch Sock Held Double in the color for your 411, which is this really nice blue color. Hopefully it'll focus. Yeah, look how nice that looks. I love Superwash tonals because it just adds so much depth without any effort at all. It gives the knit piece a lot more character than I think a unicolor yarn would. So this yarn is a sock yarn. It's a two-ply sock yarn. So within one skein, you get 400 yards or 366 meters in this single skein of sock yarn. So I did purchase two skeins to hold together and I ended up using 118 grams total to make this size junior large. So you definitely needed that second skein. The gauge that I knit this at ended up being 24 stitches per four inches, which Again, it's a little bit tighter than the suggested gauge, but my total width across the brim for this hat is really not that much different from this one here. This was 8.75 inches. This one here was 8.8 .8 inches. Really not a big difference at all. The total circumference is 17.6 inches, which again, falls into the suggested range of a child size head and you want negative ease, so. Again, I'm pretty happy with the finished sizing of this hat. So yeah, that was the rundown of all four of these also hats. Of course, I won't really know how they fit until the recipients receive them. And if I get any feedback, I would love to share that all with you. I know final fit of gifted objects is difficult to master. So maybe this is something that you guys could use as good information in the future. I would love to knit more also hats. I think it's a great pattern. I think the finished result looks really professional and is really easy to wear. And in general, I would probably knit this one again for sure. Like I kind of want this for myself, might have to get more yarn. I would knit this one again. I really love the tonal superwash yarn. And this one with the yak yarn was different. I like it a lot. I'm curious how it'll wear. I have heard that yak yarn pills a bit, but I feel like hats aren't really susceptible to too much pilling because you don't really like rub your hat on anything. Whereas like underarm sleeves you do, but yeah, so these were my also hat gift knits. I got to wrap these up, send these off to the post office, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast episode. Back to present time. I will move on to my last finished object in today's episode, and that is a pair of DK weight knit socks. These DK weight knit socks I was knitting as a gift for my sister's boyfriend, and I also have since given them away and don't have them with me to share. I will just put a picture up here. So the socks that I knit were a two by two ribbed sock that were loosely based on the Crazy Sock Ladies TK Weight Vanilla Sock Pattern, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. That sock pattern comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large. It's meant to be knit with DK Weight yarn, and the yarn that I used was Dirty Water Dye Works Lucia DK, which is a DK Weight sock yarn. It's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. The color I used was Fog, which is a really nice gray color. So the shoe size I was knitting for for this gift was a men's US 8.5 size shoe shoe and that was pretty much the only reference that I had for this foot dimensions and I just used a lot of measurements that were provided in the Craft Yarn Council's standard foot measurements based on that shoe size. So I ended up casting on 52 stitches which was right in between the medium and large stitch counts in that pattern. I ended up doing that because when I originally cast it on for the size large I was knitting it, got maybe an inch of fabric, and it just felt really big, especially when I stretched it out, and I just felt like it was going to be way too big in general. So I ripped that out, cast it on less stitches, but I thought that dropping down entirely to the size medium was going to be too small, so I thought in between would work out well. So for the leg of that sock, I did two by two ribbing, and then I followed directions from an online blog post from Rye Flower Knits for a heel flap and gusset. The reason I followed the blog post was because the sock pattern didn't have stitch counts for the stitch count that I had for the heel flap and gusset. And this blog post, really useful. I definitely recommend bookmarking it. It gives heel flap and gusset pattern directions for any stitch count at an interval of four from 48 to 88 stitches. So it really covers all different possible sizes for socks, including 52 stitches, which is what I had on my needles. So I ended up following the square heel 
directions from that pattern, which was my mistake. I did not intend to do a square heel. I usually do rounded heels with heel flapping gussets, which if you follow the crazy sock lady patterns, or for me, the other socks that I've knit are from Helen Stewart or Summer Lee Knits. Those pattern designers also use a rounded heel flap and gusset. I think it's more common than the square. And this blog post had first listed the square heel flap and gusset. And then if you scroll down, it had the rounded. And I was just reading it from top to bottom. I didn't skim the pattern before starting it. So I was just reading it chronologically and then went straight into the square heel, which is recommended for wider heels, whereas the rounded heel flap is recommended for rounded heels. I have no idea if the recipient has a square heel or rounded heel, but in general, I didn't really love the finished shape of the square heel. It fit kind of weirdly on the sock blocker. It didn't look as natural, so I think in the future I would not repeat the square heel and just continue to do rounded heels. Besides the square heel thing, I still think the sock turned out fine. You can't really tell from the pictures that it looks too different from a rounded heel. And I finished off the sock with two by two ribbing that just goes along the top of the foot and then stocking it on the bottom and then followed the crazy sock lady pattern directions for a wedge toe for the size large sock. I blocked them, gave them to the recipient and did get feedback that they fit great and they really like them. So I'm really happy that they fit. It's always a concern for me, especially with socks. I think I have to be pretty close to fitting I was always scared of them being too tight, but I'm glad that they were able to put them on without any resistance, no tightness anywhere, and they're really happy with the gift. So really excited to have those gift knits done. It definitely sucked up most of my December and I really had no time to work on personal projects. And that was a little bit of a bummer. I do enjoy gifting knits. I don't enjoy the time crunch that I put on myself when I choose to gift knits. I just feel like, the decision time between, oh, I'm going to make this gift knit and then the time it needs to be given. I just never give myself enough time to work on that project at a leisurely pace. So I'm always rushing to finish them. This has been a repetitive problem of mine that I'm hoping to improve upon in 2024. I still want to gift knit. I just need to give myself more time to finish the projects and also more time so I can still work on my personal projects and not feel like I need to ignore them to finish the gift knits. So now I'll get into my works and progress from the past few weeks. While we're on the topic of socks, I still have my Christmas socks that I was not able to finish before Christmas. In fact, I haven't even finished the first sock, but here it is. <laughs> Last time I showed you the sock, I had just finished the heel. This sock pattern is Hermione's Everyday Socks by Erica Luter. It's also a free pattern on Ravelry. It has this really nice pearl knit stitch texture. I am making these for myself and I am using US size one. So that's 2.25 millimeter needles. I like doing the nine inch circulars and I'm doing 60 stitches for my foot. I've been trying to find the perfect sock fit for me. I think 60 stitches on this size needle might be the perfect answer. So we'll see how these ones fit. I did a two by two ribbed cuff and I did 20 rounds. I did 72 rounds for the leg and then went into a fish lips kiss heel. The yarn that I'm using is a sock set by Honey and Quill called Merry Merry. So this is the sock yarn. It's this beautiful four ply 7525 sock yarn and all the colors are just so Christmassy. I love the variegation. I think that they work really nicely with this stitch pattern and I'm not getting any pooling, which is really nice and convenient because I was really hoping it wouldn't pool because I wanted it to look, you know, very variegated like it does here. The contrast color is also from the sock set. I don't know if it has a color name, but it's just your traditional red. It's the same red that comes from the main sock color Color and I think it makes for a very nice Christmas sock. I was hoping to have these done before Christmas, but that just didn't happen with the gift knitting. And that's okay. I am continuing to work on them because I feel like I should finish them before casting on another pair of socks. If I put them aside and think that I'm gonna work on them next Christmas, I just don't wanna put them aside for a whole calendar year. So I'd rather have them done. I'll get to wear them next Christmas. I mean, I don't have to wear them at Christmas, but obviously that makes it more fun to wear. <laughs> but my goal is to finish this pair of socks before I cast on any other pairs of socks. All right, now for the fun stuff, which are my sweater projects. I feel like with gift knitting and such, I have not given any time to my sweaters and I was really sad about it. I miss 
miss knitting my sweaters. I miss talking about my sweaters in the podcast. So as soon as I finished all of my gift knits and it was Christmas time and then I had a whole week off work, which has been awesome. So I have been knitting away on some sweaters. The first one I'll share is one that I have showed you in the podcast before. It's kind of been taking a little bit of a break, not for too long, but you'll remember it as the Ollie sweater by Marita Harvey. So here is my Ollie sweater. The Ollie sweater is a drop shoulder sweater. It's a DK weight knit. I really liked this pattern because of the two by two ribbing accents. I really like the super deep drop shoulder and the shoulder shaping that goes along the back. And I also really like that it has short row hem. It has a curved hem that's shorter in the front and longer in the back. And I think that was just something different that I wanted to try in the sweater. So I casted this on a while ago. I had been working on the front panel flat because drop shoulder everything is flat until you get to under the arms and I kind of put this down and then it was Christmas time so I would recently picked this back up I needed to finish the front panel and then connect in the round which is what I have here the yarn combo that I'm using is really fun this is Woolberry Fibrico's berry sock in the color rabbit rump from the caboose collection it is generally like a white or a cream color with black speckles. There are some other colored speckles thrown in there, but it's mostly black and there is some gray as well. Not really gray speckles. I feel like it's more like washes of gray, which is really nice. And I am holding it with a Surrey lace and this is an undyed Surrey lace alpaca from Birch and Lily. And uh, together they make this really nice cozy fabric. This is my first speckled sweater that I have been really excited to knit. I feel like speckles just add a little bit of depth to an otherwise plain fabric, especially with this being all stockinette. So I am knitting size small for myself and it's meant to have a lot of positive ease. This is a very oversized sweater. The recommended ease is 32 centimeters, which is what I am knitting for my size. So you can see it's really large here. You can see it's going to drop a lot over the shoulders and down the arm and especially since this is curled when I uncurl it I don't know if I can do that with one hand but you can see the idea of how it's going to be very slouchy and a good oversized fit. I am knitting this on four millimeter needles. I was able to get gauge with both of those yarns held together on this needle size and I am alternating skeins for this. This is a hand dyed yarn and I want to avoid any dramatic color pooling although it wouldn't really be pooling it's more like pooling of the speckles different skeins might have different frequencies of speckles so I don't want any like dramatic changes in the speckle frequency so I knit the back panel flat and that was the first part of the sweater I actually knit the back panel without alternating skeins but when I got to the front panel I started alternating skeins as I was knitting flat so you can see here where my yarn end is this is where I started alternating skeins and then because this panel was knit flat it's just every two rows I would just bring up a the other skein of yarn and knit with it and you can see that there is really no dramatic differences in the speckles it looks like one homogenous fabric which I'm really pleased with and I will continue to alternate skeins as I knit this sweater now that I'm connected in the round it'll be very easy I'll switch to helical knitting and just continue going through that now because I'm using two skeins of yarn held together but the undyed surrey is undyed so there shouldn't be any need to alternate the surrey I at first was just alternating the hand dyed wool and then keeping the single strand of Surrey, but that was too difficult. It's actually easier for me to just have two separate sets of both of these yarns together and then alternate them together. So that's what I ended up doing for yarn management with this project. I do want to talk about construction of this pattern and how it's knit up. This is kind of your standard drop shoulder construction, at least from the patterns that I've knit. It seems like the common formula. So nothing crazy there, although I started to get a little bit skeptical when I started knitting the front panel. It gave me a dimension to knit the front panel to, and I thought it was a little bit long like it just seemed like a lot of knitting it seemed like a lot of fabric to keep knitting flat before I was gonna join in the round and the length of the front panel is going to determine how far back the shoulders sit and how high up or low the front of the neck is and I just felt like it was too long and I did just follow the pattern directions I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt so once I connected in the round I do want to show you how tall the front neck is based on the length of the front panel. 
So I'm lining up at the bottom here where I'm at currently in the body. So when I line up these pieces together, this is how the neckline sits. This is the back, this is the front, and you can see there's really no raising of the back neck. They're almost kind of equal, and it, it's very high up on the front of my neck. And when I tried this on, I kind of experienced what it, I thought I would experience where this front collar is just like right here, and there's really no shaping to that neck. I think more traditionally, you want something where the back kind of sits like this, and the front sort of sits like this. So I am actually gonna go back, and I only did like two or three rounds, since joining in the round so not too much frogging to do but I'm gonna go back and frog till where these front and back panels are separated and I'm gonna rip back probably one whole inch of this front panel and then connect in the round which should bring down my front collar to about this length which would be much more comfortable for me to wear it's what I think will look best in the pattern and feel the best and yeah I'm kind of curious if that's like a mistake in the pattern or maybe I just wasn't following it right. I don't think I was following the pattern wrong though because it's not like you have row counts for this one. They do tell you how long to knit the back panel in inches and centimeters and then they tell you how long to knit the front panel in inches and centimeters. That's a little modification that I'm gonna do. Luckily it's nothing too labor intensive. Just gotta rip back a little bit and then reconnect in the round. Besides that, this pattern is okay to knit. One other thing that I will critique about it is I think that the English translation is not the best that I've read in a pattern. I am used to petite knits, English patterns, which I find are translated very well. I never have to think twice about what I'm reading. However, with this pattern, I feel like I have to read things more than once to really understand what it's trying to say. That's just one thing to note. I don't think there's anything translated incorrect. I just think the translation could be better. It might be a little bit confusing if you are a very brand new knitter and are not really sure what is supposed to happen in a sweater pattern. Pattern, but as someone who knows what's supposed to happen in a drop shoulder construction, it's nothing I can't figure out. I just wish it was translated a little bit better. So that's my Ollie sweater. Very excited to get working on that, especially now that I'm at the body in the round stockinette. It should fly by and looking forward to having the finished piece. Now we'll get into my new cast-ons, which I'm really excited to share. The first is a sweater from my winter knitting plans video, which just came out last week. I've been very eager to cast this on. I've had the yarn in my yarn collection for a while now, and that is the October sweater by Petite Knit. And yeah, I know there's a ton of progress on this. <laughs> and this is brand new to the podcast. Like I said, this week off work has been very fruitful for my knitting. <laughs> So the October sweater is a top-down raglan sweater by Petite Knit. It's meant to be knit with a lot of positive ease. The recommended ease is 11 and a quarter inches or 30 whole centimeters. And it's a DK weight pattern, so suggested yarns include any sort of fingering weight wool held with a silk mohair or a single strand of DK weight wool. My yarn choice for this sweater is Sorella Yarns Cashmere Sock in the color People Mover. This is from the Disney collection, and it's this beautiful variegated with all these blues, some light blues, darker blues, and then there's a little bit of kind of like lilac purple in there that sort of washes over all of the blues. You can see the purple probably more so here. And I'm holding it with this Isaiah Silk Mohair in the color number 41. I don't know the actual color name. I think it's light blue. I've seen different translations of the color name and depending on where I look online. So the color number is 41 and this is it. It's a 75% kid mohair, 25% silk, your classic lace weight mohair in a 25 gram ball. I think that these go really well together and this is what the fabric looks like I will show it to you guys up close of course when I hold it up close the camera might blow out the color a bit but you can really see all of the variegation how the silk mohair kind of blends the colors together and in general it just has like a kind of white teal sky blue it's kind of like a muted sky blue color 
and I really love it. I haven't knit with a variegated yarn in a garment before, so I was a little bit nervous about how it would look. I think in general, if I do go with variegated yarns, I want something subtle and not too high contrast with the colors next to each other, and I think this is the perfect amount of color variegation where it adds a lot of depth to the stockinette fabric, but it's not so variegated that it kind of like looks really busy, which is not what I wanted. So the cashmere sock is a fingering weight sock yarn. It's an 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon blend. And held together with the silk mohair, it is such a nice fabric. It is so soft, it feels so airy. I am knitting this on four and a half millimeter needles to get gauge, and I am just loving how it feels. Like, I can't wait to finish this so I can wear it. It just seems so cozy, and the raglan shape is just gonna be like a good staple sweater to wear. Now for the construction of this sweater, you start by knitting flat, and then you create these increases along the front of the neck to sort of shape the collar before you join in the round and that is what raises the back of the neck here. So there are no German short rows, you do get a visible increase line along the front collar which I know some people like how that looks, some people don't. I don't mind it but I also could do without it. I think from afar it's not super visible. It is one thing I noticed in her pattern photos for this pattern, Petite Knit's wearing a black sample. You can't see any stitch definition on the black sample, so if you wanted to know what the October sweater looks like in a lighter color, maybe this will help you give a better sense of the construction. Once you finish knitting flat and join in the round, it's just a standard raglan increasing until you get to where you need to get, and then you split for sleeves, and then you continue knitting the body. There is a split hem at the bottom, all of the accents are two by two rib, and I haven't really read too many details about the sleeves from the photos. I do think they're a wider sleeve than what's considered like a super tapered sleeve, which I think will be something fun to knit and to wear. A little bit different for me, most of my sweaters have kind of tight tapered sleeves. So because I'm knitting with variegated yarn, I am alternating skeins. Once again, you know, I really want to avoid any sort of color blocking or color pooling. And I started alternating skeins a little bit partway through the raglan. And because of the raglan shaping, I didn't want to do helical knitting because I'm not quite sure what to do when your helical knitting slip stitches get to the raglan increase points. So I actually followed the directions from Elizabeth Smith Knits for the yarn forward alternating technique. I will link it down below and you basically alternate skeins at the same point in the round every round. And I chose to do that right at the center of the back of the sweater, which is what I have shown here. Now, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but you can kind of see in person the line where I alternated skeins for a good amount of rows or rounds, like five-ish inches or so. Tensioning with the yarn forward technique is difficult, at least it's difficult for me. You can see I haven't quite mastered it because it is kind of visible. I think it's more visible from the back as well or the underside. So you can sort of see here where the stitches kind of tighten up from carrying that yarn all the way through despite me using my best efforts to not have extra tight stitches when pulling the yarn. I think it just happened. I don't know if anyone on here has mastered this technique, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't avoid this visible column of stitches. Despite that, I'm hoping that blocking will help sort of lessen the effect of that column of stitches. It is also on the back of the sweater, so I'm hoping I won't be too noticeable. I'm wondering if it might have been a better decision to do that point maybe along the raglan because the raglan already has sort of a defining seam, so maybe alternating skeins at that point would be less visible because it would blend in with the raglan. But in terms of alternating skeins to avoid pooling or color blocking, I think it worked out great. You can't tell at all that I have two separate skeins of yarn going. I feel like the color distribution is really even and nice and exactly what I wanted. And as I got closer to finishing off the raglan increases, I did switch to helical knitting when I knew that my stitch count wouldn't put my helical knitting slip stitches over the raglan shaping. So you can see where I sort of stopped the yarn forward technique right about here and then went into helical knitting and then it, it's really invisible that I'm alternating skeins at all. So <laughs> helical knitting is still my favorite method to use for alternating skeins in the round, but it is kind of unfortunate that you can only use it if it's only stockinette with no shaping. 
I did add the collar as soon as I was able to just because I love looking at my projects with collars. I think it gives me a better visual of how the project will look when it's done. It makes me more motivated to work on it. So for this collar, you did have to pick up stitches with a 16 inch circular needle, work the two by two rib, and then I did a bind off with the cast on edge uh, or the pickup edge of the collar to secure it, made sure I did it nice and loose so it's stretchy. And I mean, this has no problem fitting over my head. So I'm really happy with the collar. I will definitely slip some elastic in there when I'm done with this project to help keep it tight. But in general, I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. It's knitting up very quickly. So I feel like I might work on this pretty frequently to help move it along and finish it faster. I totally forgot to talk about the collar with the Ollie sweater, but that reminded me that this was pretty much the same method. You know, you pick up the stitches on a small circular needle, you work two by two ribbing in the round. This one did have a different technique for like the fold point of the collar, the petite knit pattern, the October sweater didn't have any special directions for the folding of the collar. Like if you've done a petite knit one by one ribbed collar, sometimes she asks you to do a purl row for the fold line. Sometimes she asks you to do double knitting for the fold line. The October sweater was just straight two by two ribbing and then you fold it. This one you do decrease needle size at the midpoint to give like tighter stitches at the midpoint and then you fold it and then similarly I did binding off with the pickup edge and kept it loose to keep it nice and stretchy. I do think it's funny that I'm knitting two very similar sweaters, although one is a drop shoulder and one is a raglan. They both are very oversized. They both feature the two by two ribbing. And I think it'll be fun to kind of have you know, the same but different sweaters maybe as a comparison point. You know, do I like wearing raglans more than I like wearing drop sweaters? The fibers, although a little bit different, this one has Surrey, this one has mohair. You know, they kind of have similar energies. So I think it's fun that I'm doing similar projects at the same time, but they have enough differences where I'm motivated to work on both of them simultaneously. I do have one more cast on to share with you all. <laughs> like I said, I've been really excited to work on these sweater projects. So I was like, what's one more sweater on my needles? <laughs> and this is the Aurelia Pullover by Sari Nordland. This is also a sweater from my winter knitting plans. And this is my progress so far much less progress than my other two sweaters. As you can imagine, the Aurelia pullover is a top-down raglan with all over cabling and bobbles and texture, and it's a DK weight pattern. The yarn that I'm using is Sorella Yarns Classic DK in the color Folklore, which is this really nice muted purple color. And yeah, I started casting this on, or I started knitting this and casted this on sometime in the past week. My gauge swatch told me that a four and a half millimeter needle was gonna be the best needle size for me. The pattern calls for four millimeter needles. It recommends a DK weight yarn. And I'm knitting the size two. It's meant to have one to four inches of positive ease. The size two should give me four inches of positive ease. I definitely wanna make sure that this is on the larger size rather than the smaller size for me. I don't want it to be too form fitting. I still want that kind of oversized cozy cabled sweater look. So I'm hoping four inches of positive ease will give me that. And knowing that this is also knit with superwash yarn, I think you know, the yarn is on my side because Superwash does grow with blocking. It does sort of grow with wear a little bit. So hopefully it won't be too snug. So this is what I have so far up close. Right now you're looking at the center back. There are raglan lines down here. So center back, a raglan line. This is one sleeve. And then just going around, this is the front. Not really much to see there. The other raglan, the other sleeve, and yeah, so this will kind of sit like this. Maybe I'll put it on. Nope, it's not gonna fit over my head. <laughs> um, but I'll just show you the cable pattern is very intricate. There are cables every other round and there are cables very often, like every section has multiple cables. So this has been a very slow growing project for me. You do start by knitting flat and then doing increases along the front of the neck, very similar to the October sweater. And then you join in the round by casting on stitches for the bottom of the front collar. And that will raise the back neck while keeping the cable pattern intact. 
Now I knew this was going to be a very involved knit before I cast it on, but I just don't think I understood the scope of how involved it would be. I think I was thinking it would be similar to my Moby sweater, which is a pattern by Petite Knit. I knit it earlier this year, and the Moby sweater, although all over cabled, it doesn't have as much cable. So you can see it has the two cables that go down the front and the back and then the cable along the sleeves. But that whole front middle panel, you don't need a cable needle for. And those cables that go along the front and back panels, you know, they're very long cables. Whereas this cable pattern, you have cables every other row. They happen here, 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 here along the back. They happen like here, 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 here along the sleeve. So, you know, you gotta use your cable needle constantly in every other row. So it takes a really long time to finish one row. And with that, you have to look at all of the different charts as you're knitting this. There's a different chart for the front and the back and the sleeves. And of course, I'm still increasing for the raglan increases. So I need to be looking at the charts constantly. This is a very focused knit. I actually haven't really been watching too much television while knitting this. I've literally just had the pattern up on my iPad and then knitting it, getting a couple rows in here and there and then putting it down so I can do something else. And I think I know that this will get less involved as I finish the raglan shaping once I get knitting the body in the round and the sleeves. I don't think it'll take as much focus and I'm still learning the pattern. I think there will be a point where I sort of understand the pattern and can read my knitting and can knit it maybe with the charts available, but I'm not relying on the charts to know what to do next. I am heavily reliant on my cable needle, which I have here. I actually haven't used this shape cable needle before. I used to have the other shape cable needle, which I'll put a photo of here. I actually have broken all of those, but I've owned those cable needles since I was in middle school. So I guess it makes sense that the plastic has worn down and from all of my use from it, they finally all snapped. So when I went to buy more cable needles, I picked up a pack of these. I thought I would try them. I've seen them, I think more frequently than the other shapes. So I thought maybe they'd be better, but I don't think I like this shape cable needle as much as I like the other shape. I think it's slowing me down and maybe I just need to learn how to use it better, but I definitely knew how to knit a little bit faster with the other cable needle shape. I could consider learning how to knit without a cable needle for this sweater it would definitely speed things up. And I've been trying to do some cables on this sweater without the cable needle, but because of this super wash yarn, I feel like the second I take a stitch off the needle, even though I'm holding it with my finger, you know, trying to like pinch it as I do the cable without a cable needle, they just, they really want to unfurl and unravel no matter how hard I try. I feel like if this was a stickier yarn, maybe I would have more success without a cable needle, but so far my success has been pretty low without dropping stitches. So until I can figure that out, I gotta use this. It's slowing me down. Now, I do enjoy knitting it. I'm not trying to rush through this project, but it's definitely working up at a speed where I wish it were a little bit faster, but not to the point where I'm not enjoying it. You know, it's just like, hmm, how can I accelerate this just a tad? All of that being said, I am super excited to be working on this pattern. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love how it's working up in this color yarn. This purple is so fun and it is a hand dyed yarn. So I do intend to alternate skeins once I get a little bit deeper into it because it's a tonal and not a variegated. I think I might kind of do like the, the fade in and out of different skeins. So when I get closer to the end of the first skein, I'll introduce the second skein by alternating skeins, but not necessarily have all of the skeins alternating the whole way. I think that should work out pretty well. I have to look at my skeins like in the sunlight to see if they are super different or if they aren't. You know, hoping that they aren't, I might be able to get away with just the fading in and out rather than fully alternating skeins the whole way through this project to avoid any color blocking. Can't do helical knitting here with all these cables, so I would have to use either the yarn forward technique, like I mentioned before from my October sweater, or learn something new that will hopefully have less of a dramatic effect on my tensioning. Yeah, this is my Aurelia pullover by Sari Nordland. So those are all of my knitting projects. I do want to share a few acquisitions. There is some yarn and some accessories that are new to me in the past few weeks. And the first up is a project bag. So this project bag was sent to me by the Knitting Swan 
And if you've watched my channel for a bit, you know I'm not super into knitting project bags. I don't really have a lot to share. I honestly just use, you know, random tote bags that I have and I have one like giant project bag that was gifted to me. It's not from like a small business. I think it's from Amazon, but that's where I usually just throw all of my projects into. But the Knitting Swan reached out if I wanted to try their knitting bags. The Knitting Swan is based out of the UK and it's one woman who designs all the bags and they're printed on canvas cotton. It's a very nice sturdy fabric. This is the flower doodle pattern, which I think is so cute. Just little doodles of flowers on a cream background. And this is the large project bag. And then I was also sent the small yarn bag which you can see are not is not that small at all and the large project bag is very large you can see it's bigger than my head here it has a round bottom and a drawstring top on the inside are pockets which is really nice so those are the pockets there. And I've been using this for a few weeks. I've been using the large project bag to hold my October sweater yarn. And I mentioned how I was alternating skeins and the large size combined with the round bottom has really been beneficial for yarn management. I haven't had any like tangling or anything, you know, the balls just sort of sit on the flat bottom of the bag and I pull from there and my sweater also fits in here when I'm done with it. So I really like the large project bag. I'm pleasantly surprised with how much I like it where I would consider getting another one, even though, like I said before, I'm not a huge project bag user, but this might just convert me. The small project bag has also been really useful. I was able to use it for most of my Oslo hat projects. When I was knitting up the Oslo hat with two yarns, the surrey and the wool held together i was able to fit both balls of the surrey and the wool in here and then pull from the center pull balls while knitting the hats from this bag that also has a drawstring top so in general they feel really sturdy i really like the aesthetic of them i've been talking a lot with the owner of the company and she's really nice and really passionate about delivering high quality products to her customers so if you are interested in any of these bags they are available worldwide and you can use the code Amy, it's my name, A-M-Y, for a 10% discount. It is an affiliate link and I just want to say thank you again to the Knitting Swan for sending me these bags. Next up is a yarn that I purchased recently. So over the past holiday break, I took a drive out to Western Massachusetts where Webs, the yarn store, is located. If you've ever shopped online from yarn.com, that is Webs, they do have a storefront in Massachusetts it's huge, they have lots of stuff, and it was really fun to browse. I wasn't going there with any intention to purchase, but I have been wanting to try their in-house brand called Valley Yarns. So this is Webb's like in-house yarn brand. All of their yarns from their line are sort of named after Massachusetts towns in that area, which is really cool. So this is Northampton, which is actually the town that Webb's is in, but Northampton is their worsted weight wool base. So this is a hundred grams of of wool. I think it's a Peruvian wool. It doesn't say on the label that it's a specific type of wool, but I think when you go on the website, it says it's Peruvian. And this is a 100 gram skein. You get 247 yards in this skein and it retails for $8.99. The color I got is called Ocean Heather and I have not knit with this color before. You can see it's a really deep teal blue. It is a heathered yarn, so if I hold it up close to the camera, you can see a little bit of the heathering, and it's just really pretty. I've kind of been wanting to try a color like this. I think it will look really nice on me. It'll also be really fun to knit with. I was looking specifically for a worsted weight or I mean, I said I was going to the store without any intention to buy something, but I knew that I had like a gap of worsted weight yarns in my yarn collection. Like I have a ton of fingering, a ton of DK, and I just wanted the ability to have a sweater quantity of worsted weight available if there's a worsted weight pattern that comes out that I really want to knit. So I purchased a sweater quantity in this and don't really have specific project plans yet. I'm sure I could find something to knit, but until then, I think it's just gonna hang out until maybe a pattern speaks to me or maybe there's like a new release that I really wanna knit and I'll have the yarn available. 
It feels really soft. It feels like a good sort of hard wearing wool. I checked some reviews online. People really like it. People like to compare it to Cascade 2020 and say it's pretty comparable to that. This does have more yardage than Cascade 2020, so I can't tell if it's like a little bit thinner. It is interesting that it's 247 yards per 100 grams. I feel like that gives me more of a DK weight sort of weight and yardage rather than worsted, but I do want to swatch this and see how it blocks. Maybe it blooms a lot with washing and then sort of fits a worsted weight gauge, but unsure yet, haven't knit with it, but in general, I'm really excited to have this yarn. And then my last acquisition is actually a gift from Christmas. So I had requested a new set of interchangeable needles for Christmas. I do really enjoy my current set. The current set that I use is the Knitter's Pride Nova Platina needles. They are a metal needle with sort of a chrome finish. They are very slippery and very smooth. They have long tapered tips. And I've always been a metal needle fan. I think I will continue to be a metal needle fan, but I feel like the more I use the Nova Platinas, the less I liked how slippery they were. I think at first I liked them because they were so slick but now I don't like them as much. I feel like it's hard to keep a good tension without really like cramping my hands and pulling the yarn really tight. I also just don't really love the quality of the Knitter's Pride cables. I find that they come out of their metal housings way too often. Like I've had to super glue so many of them. I find that they untwist really easily and I know I'm talking about a lot of negatives right now. I've had great use out of them for the past like three years. I just was ready to try something else. And I'm not planning on getting rid of my Knitter's Pride needle set. I just wanted to sort of upgrade and have a second set available. So the set that I requested were the Chowgu Complete Interchangeable Needles. I have a lot of Chowgu needles in their fixed circulars in a lot of smaller diameters. So most of my sock needles are Chowgu's and I've sort of amassed kind of a small collection of like four millimeters and less of their fixed needle sizes. And I really like them. I really like the stainless steel material of the needles. I find that it still has, you know, the slipperiness of metal needles that I like that helps me knit faster, but it's not nearly as slippery as the chrome plated needles. And I find that I can keep my tension on them nicer. And the red lace cables, sort of that like coated metal cable. They're just so high quality. So I really enjoy them. And I requested this set for Christmas and my husband was really nice to purchase this for me for Christmas. So this is the needle set. It does come with this case, which I also really like because it has labels of all of the needle sizes and it ranges from US 2 to US 15. So 2.75 millimeter needles through 10 millimeter needles. This is what the needle looks like up close. I really like how each of the needles has the size laser etched on them, which is really helpful to know what you're working on at any given time. It also comes with the cables, of course. So it has the cables in 14 inches, 22 inches, and 30 inches, which are just the cable lengths. These needle tips are five inches long. So in total, when you combine the needle size, you have to add 10 inches to this. So in total, the circumferences I get are 24 inches, 32 inches, and 40 inches, which I think is like the standard spread of interchangeable needle cable sizes. There are two sets, but one of them is for the larger needle diameters where the other ones are for the smaller needle diameters. The set also came with this cool little needle gauge. It's kind of a thin plastic, but it is plastic, so I don't think it's gonna rip. It kind of looks like paper, but it's not paper. And then it came with the needle stoppers that you can use to screw onto the needle cables to put your stitches on hold. It also comes with this rubberized sort of grip that you can use to tighten your needles as well as tightening keys. I think this is a really cool addition to the needle set because it really helps you grip onto the cable so you can tighten those and not risk anything coming undone as you're knitting. It also came with a whole little bag of stitch markers, which is awesome. And of course, some instructions. You might've noticed, you probably didn't notice, but I have already started using them with my Aurelia pullover. So these are the Chowgu four and a half millimeter needles. You can see the cable here. 
and have really been enjoying knitting with them so far. So yeah, that's my needle set. I don't plan on getting any more needles anytime soon. I thought it's been three-ish years since I purchased that other set, which was my very first interchangeable set, so I thought it was a good time to upgrade. I'm hoping that these will last me a very long time, and yeah, very excited to use them. Thank you, Nick, for my Christmas gift. And that brings us to the end of today's podcast. This was a really jam-packed episode. I can tell before editing it, it's going to be a long one. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you want notifications for when I post videos, which is about once a week, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.